Hello, this is Jim Ami with IT Supplies. Today we're going to go over how to set up your color management policies in the Onyx RIP software. Um, this is going to apply to whether you got Onyx Thrive, whether you have Production House or Poster Shop. You're going to see a very, very similar layout um, in all of the suite. So all of this should really apply across the board, even though we are looking at Onyx Thrive uh, 18.5 here. Okay, so um, essentially, like a lot of people um, kind of forget about setting this up. And oftentimes as a color consultant, I come in, um, you know, to an install, uh, you know, afterwards to help with uh, more fine tuning of color management. And I often see that the default quick sets are still, um, the default color management policies are still there. And they've been printing for a while with those. So I figured it'd be a good idea to go over how to set these up for your specific workflows so that you get the, the best output you can through your Onyx system. Okay, so, so there's a couple places that you can actually access this. So you can access this from the Edit Quick Set window and basically choose your printer. And then you can basically either edit the default Quick Set. So if I went in here um, to edit, let's say the S60 Quick Set, I can go into um, Change Profiles under Color Management and you'll see I have uh, CMYK image vector and RGB image vector, um, basically profiles, uh, source spaces that I can work with, okay? So that's one place that you can basically access the color management policies. The other place that you can access them is under the configure printer. You do have to um, stop your server to do this. So if you're sending print jobs, um, please finish those jobs first or don't send any jobs while this is going on. So essentially you'll see here, based on the printer that I had selected on the left-hand side here, um, it'll open up that printer window to configure that printer. And you'll see I'll have the quick set window here. So I can either edit the quick set here, or I can add like a, a completely uh, new quick set if I'd like. So in like, let's just say I would call this, we'll call this Grackle 2013. Now you edit quick sets for many different reasons. I'm just showing you a reason why you might edit a quick set or maybe at least put in the quick set with other features, the name of the um, CMYK color space or RGB color space that you'd be using. I'll, I'll go ahead and put in here um, Adobe RGB as well, because we'll set both of those spaces. So if I go under change profiles here, I can select my Grackle 2013 for CMYK image and vector images coming through the system and then I can choose Adobe RGB for my RGB files coming through the system. Now um, some of you may have never seen Grackle 2013 so let me just explain the difference between Grackle 2013 and 2006. So the main difference really is the white point of the media. So Grackle 2013 is a cooler white point um, meaning um, it's for papers that have more optical brighteners in them. So if you have a production CMYK media um, that has heavy optical brighteners, you can kind of tell because it's um, pretty cool blue. If you took a, a UV light to it, it would fluoresce pretty blue if it had optical brighteners. Um, then you might want to choose Grackle 2013. If you have a more neutral paper, uh, you know, where Grackle 2006 is a little blue of a white point, but not, you know, it's closer to neutral, maybe you choose uh, Grackle 2006. The default that, that, that you get with um, Onyx, Adobe, many different pieces of software, um, still to this day in 2020, is US Web Coded Swap V2. Um, there's a lot of talk about this, like why can't we get this changed? Uh, you know, to something of a more modern CMYK color space. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, this color space started in 1998 and was used for, from what I've heard, brass gravure cylinder printing. Not even the actual Swap 2006 grade 3 paper that's commonly used in proofing environments to simulate uh, publication prints, uh, publication press printing um, for Swap 2006. So. Um, which is actually right here, and you can see uh, Swap 2006 uh, uh, for Swap 5. So 
basically, normally what you're going to see in a production environment is somebody choosing Grackle 2006 or 2013. If you chose a swap gamut, you're going to have less saturated color. It's a smaller gamut um, with a different white point, not necessarily. It's, it's completely neutral. It doesn't have any optical brighteners in it if you're using swap. Um, so in, in the uh, in your Euro European um, installations, you'll often see ISO coded, um, ISO coded V2 here. Um, this is a 300 total ink limit, so you'd want to use this one, the V2 dot uh, underscore ECI, and you can certainly test this out. It's a, a slightly larger gamut than Grackle in certain areas, um, so some people like to use that just to get a little bit more pop out of their um, CMYK production printing. So just a brief explanation about um, new uh, CMYK gamuts that are being used. I know it says 2013, but believe it or not, in 2020, not many people have adopted this color space um, yet. Um, and then, of course, um, Adobe RGB, you could have used sRGB um, in here as well. Um, I want you to keep in mind that when you set these, um, there's only really two scenarios where um, these settings will actually be utilized. So there could be a scenario where these don't get utilized at all. And one of them is, is if you check this box, use embedded profile when available. Okay, so, so essentially if you check this box, um, you're basically saying that you're honoring um, the files that are coming into the system and you're confident that whoever worked on those files had a proper embedded color space for the output that you're going to. So if you feel comfortable with that, then you would check this box. I know um, out in the field, I see a lot of companies that will uncheck this box because they have files coming in from so many different customers with so many different skill levels that they can't be assured that that customer is basically um, embedding a proper color space in the files that come in. And they know that from, from years of history of working with files um, that printed incorrectly um, because of those issues. So, um, so, so essentially, if you uncheck this box, what you're doing is saying, I'm not really concerned at all with whatever color space comes in, in, in CMYK, whatever it is, because the system is going to take that color space away and it's going to basically normalize the color space of that file to Grackle 2013 in this case. If it was an RGB file with this unchecked, it would normalize everything to Adobe RGB. Now, if somebody sent you an sRGB file, which is a much smaller color space, just because you have Adobe RGB here does not mean that you're going to get additional crayons in your box. You will not get a larger gamut out of that file just because you converted it to a bigger box of crayons. It's still the same number of crayons. So don't be, don't be mistaken there to think that you can boost color in that way. The file would have had to be in a color space at least as large of Adobe RGB to take advantage of this. And that would be the same for this up here with Grackle. If you had something in swap and then unchecked this box and normalized everything to Grackle, in the same case, you're not adding any additional crayons to the box. You're just putting it into a bigger container. So keep that in mind. Normalizing is, is that we know what the white points of these are and we know what to expect when we use these and normalize them to these outputs and we just keep our output consistent, which is the main reason why somebody would utilize the system in this way. But if you're in a situation where you do trust your customers embedding proper color spaces, you've told them either in some disclaimer to use sRGB for all photographic output or Grackle 2013 or 2006 for all CMYK output. So you know your customers are always going to prepare their files in that way before they get to you. So you can check this box. And basically the only way that it's going to utilize these um, CMYK or RGB spaces is if they send you something that's considered what we call untagged meaning it doesn't have an embedded color space. So if it was an untagged CMYK or if it was an untagged RGB, then it would tag Grackle 2013 in a CMYK workflow or it would tag Adobe RGB in an RGB workflow simply in those untagged situations. Okay. 
So um, down here below, if you were actually simulating maybe like a, a, a press, if you were doing a proofing um, workflow, you might select a fingerprint press profile here or maybe you were um, moving to one gamut here and then you wanted to simulate a different gamut um, of a different printer, you can do that here as well. Um, so, so that's basically this page, this part of the color management policies. I know there's a lot going on there, but I think it's important for you to know um, what you're doing when you're setting this and what you're not doing by not setting it um, and, and potentially limiting your output. Um, when you're printing. So the next tab here for rendering intents, you'll see um, CMYK image perceptual with black point compensation. Um, oftentimes, you know, if it's um, if there's a lot of photographic output in the CMYK file, then I might use black point compensation because what it, it's going to do for you, it's basically an Adobe feature to open up shadow detail. Um, typically, what you're going to see that in photographic work as opposed to graphic design. Um, so if there's shadow detail in a photo, um, if you don't check this, it potentially can crush those shadows to black. Um, so you don't see any fine detail in those shadows where if you did have this checked um, and you had photographic imagery in that CMYK file, you could potentially reveal some more shadow detail if you had this checked. But typically when I'm, I'm looking at CMYK graphic design, we're just choosing perceptual as the best output here. And I'm going to explain what perceptual and relative color metric do um, in another video because it's, it's a little bit complicated and I want this video to go too long in, in another um, um, pretty intricate topic in terms of which rendering intents you choose. I'm going to simply give you what I like to choose for the, uh, the majority of CMYK output and RGB output. So in RGB, I would choose um, relative color metric for pretty much the majority relative color metric or relative color metric with black point compensation for the majority of RGB files that are coming through a system. Um, and again, it's, it, it's going to uh, make a lot more sense when I explain it in, um, in an additional video. But essentially, I want to open up my shadow detail because usually RGB work is going to be photographic work. So I, I usually do like to use black white compensation here, um, but you don't necessarily have to. You could choose relative color metric. Um, you can also choose perceptual here as well. And again, I'm going to explain um, um, why you would choose one or the other in a follow up video. Uh, when you choose absolute color metric, Typically, you won't see this for RGB. You could see it for CMYK, and 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 typically, you're only going to see it in CMYK uh, if somebody is simulating either another printer, and you want to simulate the white point of the media on that printer. This is commonly used for proofing for um, press work, so that we would simulate uh, the basically the press sheet white point you know, that's going to be utilized on the press, um, as well as the, um, you know, potential gamut, typically a grackle gamut in the U.S., for instance, or you might use an actual ICC profile of that press itself, and we would be simulating um, the white point of the press sheet with that profile. So typically you would see absolute color metric only in a CMYK workflow, but for CMYK production printing, which is predominantly what we're talking about here in Onyx, um, we would probably want to just keep that at perceptual. Um, and then with RGB, typically you will not choose absolute co color metric. I, I haven't seen any case where, where that would make sense. Um, but saturation is something that you might potentially see. You could see saturation in CMYK with CMYK graphic design as well. But what saturation does is basically, it basically boosts the colors of the file. So it's going to print inaccurately. So keep that in mind. If you're printing something for customers and they're expecting to get back what they gave you, um, printing in saturation is basically giving them more pop. So if they asked you for more pop, this is something that you could potentially do. Um, but it's not recommended. Usually when we see saturation, it's, it's meant for um, situations like this. I'll give you an example. Um, when you drive down the highway and you're looking at a billboard that's potentially a half mile away or a mile away, um, that billboard needs to draw your eye to that billboard. 
So a, a common approach is to use saturation as the rendering intent here so that the graphics on that billboard pop more so that you can see it better from the highway. So, so again, this is not for accurate output. Um, so it's not very commonly used. Typically we stick to perceptual um, and relative color metric here in RGB. Poster color is not something that I'm familiar with in Onyx. This might be something new in 18.5. It's not something that I've used, but it sounds very similar to saturation. Maybe maybe it doesn't um, saturate as much, or I, I'm not really sure. I'm not, I don't want to speak to something that I've never used. Um, maybe something that you could test out or investigate in um, the Onyx manual, something like that. Okay, so lab images it's very uncommon in production printing to see anybody using a lab image so um, we'll just keep that at the default there and then if you actually embed rendering intents into the files or the customers do um, you can check this to use the embedded personally i think you should trust um, the gamuts of your printers and your paper yourself and do not embed rendering intents um, render it out the way you think it's going to print out best in your system. Okay, so I'm going to keep this one at relative color metric with black point compensation. And that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much all you're going to need to set um, the output tab here. These are pretty advanced features using ICC Max sub profiles, um, advanced black generation or GCR settings and, and spot channel replacements. So this is a, a little bit more involved and probably requires a separate video to go over. So I really wanted to just go over setting up your main color man management policies in terms of source profiles, as well as the rendering intents that you would use. Okay, so after I've set that up, so when I've had this up here, so now I can go ahead and save this out and you can see I have a, a separate quick set that will use those rendering intents for me. Okay, so now if I close this out, if I went to edit quick sets now instead, and I chose that, you can see that my quick set is there. So if I brought a file into the system, it's going to, and with those rules that I gave you, it's going to follow those rules for that particular workflow. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I, I know like I've seen many, many times that color management policies aren't set when I get on site. Um, so something that you might want to look at, check into um, if, it, if it wasn't done, um, you know, initially, um, either by yourself or your installer. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching this. If you would like to see more of these videos, please go to our YouTube channel.